Welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in digital infrastructure, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today is Jay Lawrence. He is the CEO of ECS. Jay, welcome. Hey, thanks. Have Good to be here. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you here live on JSA TV from ITW 2024 in the beautiful National Harbor. Uh, this is your first time on JSA TV. Well, actually, it's my first time on JSA TV as the CEO for ECS, but I have been on before and I'm glad to be back. Oh, well, welcome back then. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Uh, such an honor to have you here under ECS as the CEO. Congratulations. Uh, you are seemingly operating right in the middle of a new tech innovation and real world deployment. How does ECS marry the two to provide customer specific solutions? Well, we've got a great history, a great DNA of being an engineering business. Uh, the company has been around for over 30 years and predominantly are been known as a systems integration business. Um, but with all that rich engineering capability, when I came into the CEO role, uh, we decided that there was a really big benefit to focusing those capacities towards real world problems to get real world outcomes. So we've really applied our focus towards areas like 5G, uh, soon 6G. That moves a lot of the compute to the edge. There's a lot of new problems that come with the computing situation yeah. at the edge, the environment, the thermals, everything, you name it. And then of course you can't be in compute and not be in AI. Um, so we've got a practice with AI and we'll talk more about that when we get into solutions, innovation and whatnot uh, as the company evolves. And then finally, all these chips are getting hotter. So we've said that we need to focus on liquid cooling. Um, there is a big green component, which is why I'm part of the Greener Data book, because I think that practical solutions to being green make sense and liquid is certainly part of it. And of course, you might say, well, you're in AI, which is making everything hotter, but then you're in liquid cooling, which is helping to be more efficient in terms of how we handle that. I like to say we're both the drug dealer and the rehab center. Um, and that really helps us in terms of what our message is. We get out and we really are trying to solve problems holistically and our customers are welcoming it. You definitely did highlight that uh, <laughs> phrase on the panel last night uh, and definitely opened a lot of eyes when you did, but absolutely the truth there. It works. <laughs> it works, uh, 100%. So on that note, let's talk innovation, specifically centers of innovation. I think you have some uh, news to mention there. Well, yeah, one of the things, uh, again, it's just a compelling asset the company had built was all these labs. We had so much investment and so much capacity to develop solutions for our customers, but we were not promoting it. So one of the first things that we did is say, let's just make this an innovation center. You know, lots of companies try to dabble in innovation. We've decided to make it central to who we are because our industry is really good at invention. You look at what NVIDIA and AMD and Intel are doing with the next generation chips. Well, someone's got to put those into packages and solutions and architectures that work in the real world, but that means bringing in the software partner, looking at how do you manage a deployable system? How do you manage the thermals? What are the shock and vibration issues? And at the end of the day, people want to open up their box and have it work. Um, so we'd like to make it as white glove as possible. And that all is born out of our innovation uh, innovation center and our ideology around that. Wow. Well, definitely sounds innovative. Uh, I hope so. so. <laughs> yes, it does. Thanks for sharing. And you're also a Greener Data author, uh, one of our sponsors of last night's festivities. Thank you so much. Uh, you sat on the panel with several other thought leaders. So why don't you give us a 30-second uh, synopsis of your chapter and why contributing into Greener Data Volume 2, an Amazon bestseller, uh, was important to you? Well, um, a number of reasons. 30 seconds will be hard, but I'll paraphrase. I, I think at the end of the day, what drew me to this was a couple of things. One is I'm not ideologically a green focused person. I think that there has to be common sense and practical things done in business that can really enable and propel that kind of thinking. Too often we see it being policy driven or purely ideologically driven. And the problem with that is the most powerful thing I think for any person or business that's going to make these investments is the profit incentive. Right. 
if people can make money, and as part of what I had said in the title, I think was, you know, how to make green by being green. Uh, to me, that's just common sense. And, you know, unfortunately, common sense tends to be uncommon. So what I was trying to show, and I use the metaphor, which is one of many that we have in our ECS toolbox of immersion cooling. And that's where servers and computers are immersed in a liquid. Mm -hmm. And that has come so far in such a short period of time. And we see that becoming mainstream in short order. Now, you do have this interesting combination of ideologies and technologies with 5G, AI, and edge computing and whatnot. It's almost a perfect storm to say if we have that profit incentive and we trust that there's enough good people out there that are going to do the right thing and they have the right incentive to do it, they will. So that's the message I was trying to get out of the book is there are ways to do this that are very impactful. And most importantly, I think the punchline is the IT and computing world, in my view, can make as big an impact right now as any other industry or sets of industries combined. And therefore, we should be doing it and making money in the process of doing it. Absolutely true. Uh, thank you for giving us the highlight of your chapter in Greener Data Volume 2. And what can we expect to see from ECS in the next 18, 24 months? Well, you know, we're very much right now active on a number of program developments. Um, and by programs, I mean advancing uh, in our innovation center. We have a liquid lab that has multiple technologies in there that we're looking to optimize and perfect. We're looking at edge deployment for 5 and then 6G. And we're, again, tailoring computing platforms to meet those needs. I said yesterday in the panel, too, that, you know, AI right now is still wearing its diaper. It's, it's a baby, you know. And what's it going to look like in two years? It's anybody's guess, but I can tell you this, it's not going to be four or five things like inferencing and machine learning and gen AI. It's going to be fragments upon fragments where workloads will get more specific. The compute requirements are going to get more specific. We want to be at the forefront of solving those problems for and with our customers and presenting smart ways of bringing it to market that are in fact responsible and profitable. Yeah, responsible, profitable, sustainable. Well, you can't have a sustainable philosophy without a sustainable business model. A hundred percent. And that is that is central to our, our vision. Yeah. And that vision is definitely something that we here at JSA are aligned with as part of our Greener Data initiative, the Greener Data Exchange event that happened last night, and our volume two book. Uh, so you can get more details at greenerdata.net. Jay Lawrence, one of our featured authors, a panelist here at ITW 2024 on our Greener Data Exchange panel last evening, celebration for the ages. Uh, how many times did we say AI? Um, probably not enough because yeah. it's just it's out there. It's not going yeah, away. Here. And I think one of the comments that got made was, you know, the carbon footprint's going to probably go up before it comes down. Yes, that was so, one of the comments. And, and I think that, you know, there's a I think that goes back to practical, right? You know, we have to be practical as we get to being smarter and more responsible. Like I said, we want to drive it, but no, it was AI was probably not said enough because it's just, you can't be in this industry and not talk about AI. Absolutely not, yes. So, it's a pleasure having you here today, Jay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you viewers for tuning in to another insightful, impactful episode of JSA TV, live here from ITW 2024. Viewers, stay curious. Stay connected and happy networking.